<laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me open the show. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Beard of Geeks, the weekly grab bag of topics, topic movies, comics, video games and TV. Uh, so my name's Jay, so I'm the Beard Master and with me, Bobby Baxter. G'day mate. G'day. How you going? Yeah, I'm alright. Just I'm got bit- back from the cinema. From the cinema? Mm. Mm. What did we see, Bobby? Uh, baby, br- uh, baby Driver. <laughs> you were going to say Baby Brown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't miss him that much. No, no. 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 Bastard. He's in Queensland yeah. at the moment. Keep sending me Snapchats of like him playing tennis in like his shorts and t-shirt and shit. <laughs> like Pat's never held a tennis racket in his life. Rolled up socks and <laughs> yeah. a sweater tied around his shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> He's dyed his hair blonde. <laughs> what hair? His peach fuzz. <laughs> oh, so how you been, brother? Yeah, pretty good. Yep. Rolling along as usual. Yep, plodding along. You? Same old, same old for the for the Jago Meister. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up to? Tell me. Uh, How's your life? Life's- How are you acclimating to this Tasmanian winter? Oh, it's fucking harsh. <laughs> it's harsh. What was it, like minus three this morning? Yeah, it was fucked. It's fucked up. I- it's like coming from Melbourne, like you consider Bass Strait like the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you played, you played Tassie. <laughs> We're just on, yeah, it's just upside down from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. But, Tasmanians um, are all white walkers. Yeah, we are. <laughs> no, um, yeah, it was, I I think I stayed into bed till like eight o'clock this morning. I, I was set my alarm for six and I just, I just couldn't get out. It's nah. Freezing. Fuck this. No. Nah. You nah. didn't have the choice though, did you? No, nah, I was in it, mate. I was amongst it. <laughs> Bloody cold. <laughs> Fucking thing. Mm. <laughs> anyway, so. I gotta tell you, mate. Mm. I got beef. Ooh, with me? No. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I got beef with the Launceston City Council. Oh, here we go. <laughs> right. Should, so, we'll- shall I put this in writing? <laughs> <laughs> Take this down. I'll, I'll be your scribe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, it's a little thing. Okay. Mm. Launceston City Council. They've got the monopoly on the parking right in town. Bastards. Bastards. <laughs> So, I had to go get, like, movie tickets and that today for Baby Driver. Mm-hmm. So, I goes into town and I can go, like, place through work where I can get the cheap movie vouchers, which is outside of the city centre. So, I pull up on a park and I put- Where I'm is up- this secret place? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put, like, 20 cents in the metre because I'm only going to be five minutes. Yeah. So, I put 20 cents in the metre, five and a half minutes I get, mm. right? So, I go in, I do my thing, come back to the car, drive into town- so I can go into the cinema to yep. book the tickets, pull up to uh, Meter, which is exactly the same as the one I was at ten minutes earlier. Mm-hmm. You're only going to be five minutes. Put twenty cents in it. Four and a half minutes I get. Oh jerks! Stinging you out of your minute, dodgy <laughs> bastards! <laughs> Trying to get them tickets. Yeah. Trying to write them tickets. Get that ticket money. <laughs> Fucking nonsense and city council, bastards. <laughs> I did have a girl from the examiner in here today. I should have brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> front page news. <laughs> front page news. <laughs> Local podcasting idiot pissed about parking meters. <laughs> Ten cents out of pocket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Beater Geek is going to be in our uh, local newspaper this week or Yay. maybe next week. So, yeah, I had a very nice lady from uh, the paper here today. And we had a bit of a natter for half an hour about the podcast. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to be in the paper. Cool. We love the examiner. Pat used to work for the examiner. Mm, he did. For a long time there. It's yeah, like, for like eight years yeah. or something. Then he went and got all uh, internet famous and shit. Well, he was kind of internet famous while he was at the examiner. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm. I was listening to the old episode of the podcast today. I was like, Patrick Brown was still famous before he was Patrick Brown. Yeah. <laughs> mm. He's so, always gone by his name, though, as well. He, 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 didn't, he didn't have like some kind of... Suited online, him. yeah, like art germ or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I had heaps of those, and I'm really ashamed of all of them. <laughs> but- 66 crows. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I might jump in. I watched Neil Blomkamp's Oat Studios shorts, his uh, short yep. films he's been putting out. Yep. There's a new one out today 
called Zagote, which is like a sci-fi one with Dakota Fanning's in it, I think. Oh, okay. But I watched the first two, uh, Raka and Firebase, and man, they're pretty good. Yeah. Pretty bloody good. Mm. Bonkamp directs them all, and I he think- like I think co-wrote- them all. I think out of the two, Firebase skipped. was definitely my favourite. Yeah, okay, mm. I'll give that a watch. I sort of skipped through um, Rucker just to just to have a, a quick sort of skim through because it's what is it like 15, 20 minutes long or something? Yeah, like? about twenty two minutes. I yeah, think. so mm. I was in the middle of a work day, so I just sort of jumped through. But visually, it looked pretty cool. Like, yeah, they looked really good. Really kind of disturbing looking, just gross sci fi kind of looking shit. Yeah, in there. Yeah. Firebase is really good. Definitely my favourite of the two. Yeah. Mm. Vietnam set. Um, thing. Yeah, really cool. Cool. Really cool short film. And yeah, Zagote was out today. Yeah. So I'll probably watch that tomorrow. Pretty keen to watch that, actually. Mm. Mm. Hopefully something comes of all this. You can do another volume or maybe a feature of one of these or something new. Pick up, yeah, someone gets interested in expanding one of the ideas into a full-length full, full mm. length feature or something. Or- mm. They, are they? Well, you've only seen two of them so far, yeah. Yeah. Are they kind of connected at all, or are they just completely different little? No, nah, they're stories? all different. They're all something new. They're all very experimental. Yeah. But yeah, they're a lot of fun. They're pretty edgy too. Pretty dark and edgy. Mm, that's what I, like. I got out of what I saw of Racker. Yeah, mm. it looked pretty like. There's some fucked up visuals in that too. Yeah. Same with Firebase. Yep. But they're both really cool. I liked them both. Mm. Yeah, keen to watch um, Zagote. Yes. Mm. Do you know what that one's about, roughly? Or By the look of it, I saw the teaser. It's just like this kind of sci-fi monster-looking thing. Like the other ones, then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not really sure. You only like it. There's only been like an eight-second teaser. Yeah. But yeah, okay. it was up today, but I didn't have a chance to watch it today. Cool. And I also watched uh, season one of Castlevania on Netflix. Oh, I want to check that out. Yeah. It's like there's only four episodes which threw that's, me off. Yeah, that's pretty It's like four 22-minute episodes, so it's pretty much just like an hour and a half film. Yeah, okay. Maybe but it, it was slated for a film and they've chopped them up. I don't know. Mm. I don't know, but it was good. I enjoyed it. It definitely left me wanting more because mm. it feels just like sort of, I don't know, just not really taste. a part one, but yeah, just sort of wet my whistle, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just sort of, yeah, dip my toe in, but I wanted to go like waist deep, get yeah. in there, <laughs> you know? But yeah, it was enjoyable. I uh, definitely want to give it a shot. Like it, it looks cool. It looks mm. really good. It's kind of that anime-ish sort of style. Isn't oh yeah, it's, it's anime. But it, it's a Western company that's done it, or yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And um, Adi Shankar produced, and he's going to. He announced the other day that they're doing an Assassin's Creed Netflix series. I imagine mm. that'll probably be an anime as well. Animated, yeah. Hmm. That'd be kind of cool. I'd like to see an animated version. That would of be that. cool. Yeah. 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 No, I think I'll give it a go. I'm not really one that's sort of into anime stuff. I I just haven't found my my one, I guess. Like, mm. you know, I can appreciate the art form and stuff, but I don't know. I, a lot of it's just... I think there's a lot of bad anime <laughs> that yes. throws me off, you know? Um, I'm a big fan of anime. I've watched a lot of anime over the years. Have you ever watched Cowboy Bebop? Not Cowboy Bebop. I've seen, like, Akira, which is pretty cool. I've never actually seen Akira. It's batshit crazy mm. like anime tends to be but, tetsuo but um, um like artistically is amazing it's fucking just like incredible drawing skills and stuff that have gone into that mm-hmm. making that movie but uh i've sort of seen a few ghibli movies not all of them but um i tend to like those they're weird and throw you off a bit but but they're kind of cute as well they're not yeah they're not like that kind of chopping heads off people and yeah <laughs> you know in the last week or so, I've really sort of got an, a bit of an itch to go back and watch, like, Disney movies from my childhood. Yeah, right. So, like, Kate and I, we watched Aladdin on Netflix, like, a week or so ago. Yep. We watched that. And I've actually been on YouTube, like, the last couple of days, like, re-watching, like, songs <laughs> from, like, yeah. all these Disney movies. Like, um, Hunchback of Notre Dame, especially. That's There's- a Disney movie I've never seen. Really? I... Uh, lately, for some weird reason, I've really wanted to to watch that as well. It's, I don't know why. It's actually really um, it's like the darkest mm. Disney movie. There's this one song in there called Hellfire. Mm. Yeah, you know, sung by I don't know, is it Judge Frollo or Count Frollo or whatever. But he's like a priest. You know, he works in the church or whatever. Yeah. But there's lots of talk in that movie of you know God and the devil and gypsies and this big whole like 
subtext of like genocide, like he wants to wipe out the gypsies and all this stuff, right. like in the film. It's definitely very dark. None of that which I picked up on when I was a kid, but no. <laughs> yeah, I've just sort of been yeah, wanna go back and sort of rewatch some of those films and mm. Mm, good thing there's a big Disney sale, J B Hi Fi at the moment. Ooh, good on it. I did buy <laughs> buy discs the other day actually. I yeah. bought the Aladdin sequels because I had like one of the Aladdin sequels when I was a kid. And think- it was only like ten bucks for like two movies. I was like, yeah, I'll get that. I think there's actually a fair bit of uh, Disney floating around on Netflix. I think they've they did a deal like a year or two ago, and they've got quite a few mm. Disney movies on there. So I watch them every now and then. But um, the last oh, no, it wouldn't be the last one. But the last one that like I went back to after a long time was The Lion King. Um, when it came out in 3D a few years mm-hmm. ago, we went and saw that, and it kind of sounds like something that wouldn't just would be a bit shit, you know. Um, but we gave it a go with the 3D goggles and stuff, and it actually improved the movie a lot. I thought like it was really? actually really good. Like the whole Mufasa's death scene, like the wildebeest stampede. Yeah, uh, as the fog cleared. Spoiler in alert. That, yeah. <laughs> 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 but as the fog cleared in that, and you and you saw um, Mufasa laying on the ground in the middle of that valley, like in with the 3D depth. Holy shit! Like that. That actually brought brought a tear to my eye for the first time ever watching Lion King. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I think there was just something about it made it more real. It was crazy. Jesus. And just being able to, as an animator as well, being able to see like the different planes that they've put the cells on and stuff, you can kind of like it was just interesting um, from a technical standpoint to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I do like the Lion King. Yeah. I was playing it on the Mega Drive when I pulled the Mega Drive out the other week. Oh, it's a I, good game, too. Yeah, 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 I pulled it in and I've- It's got, hard, but it's good, yeah. Well, I got to the second level and I'm like, I'm nowhere near as good as I used to be when I was a kid because no. I could not figure out how to get through the second level again. Mm. It took me like five minutes to realize I had to like go to this bit and then go back to get over further. I was like, oh, no, that's what I had to do. Oh, uh, yeah. Not like fucking Crash Bandicoot, fucking shit game. <laughs> 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 Fuck, that game's tough. I was, yep. getting, I was getting so wild with that over the weekend. <laughs> I'm like, if I can't get through this level, I'm just going to turn it off. <laughs> couldn't get through it, turned it off. Come back to it later in the day, tried it again, couldn't get through it, turned it off. <laughs> Not going to keep playing. I'm just going to, just can't get through it, walk away. <laughs> <laughs> now they're going to have to leave Crash for like another 20 years and bring it back when everyone's forgotten how fucking much they hated playing it. <laughs> well, you got to imagine the next thing they're going to bring out is um, Spyro. They'll probably be like a Spyro oh, remaster. True. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, mm, Crash made all the money. Let's do Spyro next. Mm. Mm. But uh, the last week, you and I have been playing Overwatch. Yeah, a little bit here and there. Mm. Yeah, Getting I bought Overwatch, and we have like a group chat on Facebook. <laughs> and I'm like, if I post a photo on here, it's going to start a snowball effect, and one person's going to buy it. Then after that, the next person's going to buy it, and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> <A> massive fucking <laughs> snowball effect. <laughs> Everyone just went out and bought it. Now we all play Overwatch. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't had a chance where we all get on at the same time, though. No. Mm. Yeah, we we'll have to line that up. We're all just sort of, like, downloading the patch, <laughs> for one. Like, that's 20 it's 22 gig patch, even, yeah. Before you can even, like, fire it up. But, um, but yeah, also, it's just kind of overwhelming when you open it up and they go, mm. they give you, like, three seconds to choose out of 20-odd characters, like go and you're like oh fuck it i don't know like yeah. the big fat guy let's go in. <laughs> yeah but it, it, it's surprisingly easy to pick up isn't it like, yeah yeah you've just got to get over that first hurdle you've just got to play five or ten games yeah mm. yeah because it only took me a, a day or so to get a bit of a feel for it I, like, yeah, I, okay. I i came in as a fucking grandmaster somehow i i fired it up and I played my first maybe 10 to 15 matches this in this little, you know, maybe two hours, three hours in the afternoon. Didn't die once. Won, like, every match that I played in, like, game after game after game after game. And I was like, okay, maybe my battle skill feeds, battlefield skills are, like, you know, helping me out here. I'm like, oh, okay, I could get used to this. This is good. Like, this is actually fucking easy. I don't know what everyone's talking about. It's, it's not that hard. And then uh, put uh, turned it off, went away for a couple of hours, came back a few hours later, and I like sat down all fucking cocky and shit, ready to win, and fired it up and lost like ten times in a row, <laughs> <laughs> died thirty times. And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? And uh, yeah, I think I think I was just in a lucky, good team because uh, I think that makes all the difference. It absolutely does. I played a game yesterday, and we got annihilated. Like we lost the match. 
in like three and a half minutes. We got oh, flogged. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was bad. It was really bad. Yeah. I'm like, oh, geez, that was a quick match. I'm not playing as that character again. I'm no, <laughs> Obviously, I'm no good as that character. <laughs> and everyone's like voting, like, I want to stay on your team. And I'm like, fuck off. Go your away. shit. <laughs> I'm just trying to play with winners. Yeah. <laughs> I can almost guarantee now that I was the like one shit guy on the on the awesome team in that first uh, afternoon where I sat down, and they're probably all looking at me going, "Look at this useless bastard! He's just running around in the yeah. corner, <laughs> shooting his own characters and shit." <laughs> mm. There's some really good people playing that game though. Fucking hell, there is. Mm. I, I, it's got a real Team Fortress Two feel to it, and I fucking loved that game. Like, so mm. yeah, jumping back into this. It feels pretty familiar. Like, the actual, like, character classes are pretty fucking similar to TF2. Mm. Yeah. I do like Overwatch. I like the selection of characters. They're all very colourful and whatever. Mm. And you can play pretty quick matches and, you know, you can get into it pretty quickly. And it's a lot of fun. But I I don't get that that uh, adrenaline hit that I get from Battlefield 1 when I'm playing. There's explosions yeah. going around everywhere and I'm like, fuck, medic, yeah. get up, son. Psh, yeah. Sniper bullets, like... Fizzing past your ears. Yeah, pigging past your ears. Like, pew. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah Tanks does. rolling over the hill. You're like, fuck, it's a tank. It's a tank. <laughs> horse. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody shoot that horse. <laughs> yeah, it, it def- definitely doesn't have that same um, impact that Battlefield does. But it is enjoyable, though. I'm, I'm digging it. And what I really like... Uh, like in comparison to Battlefield, Battlefield, everyone looks the same. Like, mm. unless you're in a tank or a horse or a plane, everyone kind of just looks like a soldier. And it's kind of hard to see who's what. Like, especially with the elite classes and shit, sometimes you're like, why isn't this guy dying? And then yeah, you, realize- you don't realize until you're right on top of him. Yeah. And then by that time, you're dead. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, whereas Overwatch, like, the silhouettes are so strong on the characters that you, you can pick them a mile away. You're like, oh, shit, there's the Roadhog guy. Like, stay away from him. Yeah, you there's know. Widowmaker. Get to cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. So, digging it. Yeah, I'll dig it too. Yeah. Don't know about Pat, though. No, fucking. He put it. I, I said to him the other day, I was like, Do you have a go, Overwatch? He's like, Yeah, put it in. And what'd you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. Just like Rick and Morty, huh? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Slap him. <laughs> anyway, we might jump to some news. All right. I got a few bits here. Just yep. a few. We're definitely going to try and keep this episode shorter today. We're 20 minutes in, maybe another hour tops, but I don't think we'll go that long. We'll see. So, bit of sad news at the top. Joan Lee died. Stan Lee's wife, 93 mm. years old. Yeah. Had a stroke and, and died a few years later, which is a, a bit of a kick in the guts. Yeah. Mm. Poor Stan. Poor Stan. Yeah. It worries me now because, you know what they well, say, you know, she was everything to him. You know, they say one goes and it's not long after the other one. So, I don't know if I can live in a world with that Stan Lee. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to jump the gun, but he, fuck, he is a, he's an old dude. So, mm. He's yeah. only pushing 100. Yeah, that's crazy. And, yeah, yeah, sad. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but pretty bloody good innings. What's she, 93? 93. Yeah, that's incredible. I know, right? Yeah. I can only dream to live that long. Yeah. I never thought I'd live past 40. <laughs> I got another eight years, we'll say. We'll probably be working in it into our 90s by the time <laughs> that <roster laughs> it. Daniel Craig may be coming back as James Bond. There's a bit of a rumor on the grapevine. Now, after Spectre came out, when Craig was on the uh, you know thing, the promo stuff for Spectre, mm. he said um, he would have to he would slit his wrist before he came back as James Bond, and then he sort of you know watered it down a bit and said you know if I did come back for another James Bond, it would only be because of the money. Mm. And apparently there was this rumor a while back that they offered him $150 million to come back for, like, another two movies, I think. Jesus. Mm. But there's a rumor, apparently, there's a source that- That's uh, a good way to get a pay rise, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> apparently there's some source there that, you know, um, there's uh, you know, a bit of good word that Craig may be coming back. But apparently they want to get Adele back as well to do the uh, the theme, the song. Yeah, because okay. she, yeah. she won a bloody Oscar in that for Skyfall. Yeah. 
Hmm. It's good. It's a good song though. What do you? How do you feel about him coming back? Like, I mean, I don't I, really want him to come back if he doesn't want to. That's yeah. I don't want to. Like if, if like I don't really hold. Uh, you know, I, I don't race out to see Bond films to be honest. But you know, I I do enjoy them. But I I'd I really like to see Casino Royale. Take a take a a role like that that fucking just about every actor on the planet like wants to play and do a half assed you know job of it mm. yeah that's like specter like he i think he was pretty much you know sort he of on the end of his tether so. there yeah. yeah he phoned it in a bit i don't think i saw specter i don't you don't miss it much no skyfall was the last great one yeah mm. and cause really like casino royale as well yeah you could see he was going into that one <clears> like <throat> you know trying to change things up and and do a good job yeah. and then that's the thing with these actors they they chase after these big roles and then when they hit you know like craig is he wants to be james bond and they're like yeah he takes off and he does it for three or four movies and he's like you know what i don't want to do it anymore but you're so good you're making all this money we're gonna throw all this money no nah, i don't want to do it anymore but that's what you're always going to be known as now james bond mm. like what do you think of when you think of pierce brosnan you don't yeah. think of Remington Steel, do you? <laughs> you think of 007, James Bond. Yeah. So there's that. Now, we're just talking about The Lion King, mm. but uh, John Oliver, you're very aware who John Oliver is? Yep. John Oliver has been cast as Zazu in the live-action Lion King. Now, it was Rowan Atkinson That's correct, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Have you seen The Jungle Book? The, the live-action live one? Yeah. What do you think? The, the, the animal stuff. Didn't really do anything for me. I was uh, Jungle Book was probably the VHS that got the most play from me when I was a kid, uh, because like Lion King came out when I was about nine or ten, so I, I was sort of pushing into, you know, starting to watch more adulty kind of things. By then, I loved the Lion Porn. King, but <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> late night SBS, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, before that, we owned The Jungle Book, and I, I watched the shit out of that and uh, and used to love the animation in it and stuff. Trust so, in me. So I had, a, like, a lot of attachment to the to the animated one, and, yeah, watching the live-action one didn't fucking do anything for me. Even, like, you know, I think what the problem was for me, especially with that movie, is they casted actors that were two bigger names. You, you couldn't see anything but their faces on the animals kind of thing. Mm. You're hearing Bill Murray and you're like, it's Bill Murray's voice. And you're hearing yeah. Idris Elba and it's like, it's it's Idris. Like, yeah. mm. Scarlett yeah. Johansson. And- yeah. Mm. So. That's the problem with all these movies now. They don't, you know, they hire all these celebrities. There has to be a name attached. Well, that's yeah, what started to, sell, in- to get people to go to the movie, they have yeah. to put all these big names on there. But then, yeah, That's what sort of started in the mid-90s it it as well. It. Yeah. Like, to begin with, like, you could cast a name actor and it didn't matter. The movie hit or missed on its own merits. Yeah. But then sort of the mid-90s hit, and I think it was sort of mainly around sort of, well, not really the Toy Story flicks, but, you know, Tom Hanks and Tim Allen and yeah, that celebrity, you know, selling culture. I don't know. Fuck it. Who cares? I just want good movies, damn it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that was weak. <laughs> Poor form. Yeah. How, are, how are your um $40 worth of beer? <laughs> yeah, pretty good. So, Bobby yeah. got four slabs of beer for 44 bucks. Now, I don't know who he had to blow to get that deal. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> my wife works at Dan Murphy. <laughs> and so, yeah, so she's out the back um, about to about to wrap up for the day and um, saw that, like, one of her bosses or something was, was marking down all these slabs. And she went over there and she said, what's going on with these? And they were like, oh, they're about to go out of date or something. So we're marking them down to like $11.30 a slab or something. Jesus. So she <laughs> she messages me straight away and says, do you need beer? Do you need beer? So I was like, yep, fucking put me down for it, whatever. So she got a staff discount as well in the end. Like it came to under 40 bucks for four slabs. Jesus. So I've got a mountain of beer at my house now. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. No dry July for you. Nope. <laughs> it's going to be a wet that. July for you. <laughs> this is a good bit of news. This is one bit of news I found very appealing. Uh, it's comic, good news. Comic book news. Ooh. It's been announced in October. There's a new eight-issue limited Batman series coming out. It's called Batman White Knight. Mm-hmm. Now, it's uh, it's kind of one of these, well, not really, kind of an Elseworld tale, so sort of outside of... I don't know if it's a part of the Batman canon or not. I don't think it is. 
Okay. The book is written and drawn by Sean Gordon Murphy. Uh-huh. Now, the premise of the book is that the Joker and Harley Quinn are both rehabilitated. Mm-hmm. And so, they're reformed. So, they're, you know, they're no longer supervillains and that. They're no longer evil. They sort of come back, you know, to being normal people. Mm-hmm. And the Joker becomes a politician. And so, the it's kind of flipped. So, in this book, the Joker's kind of the hero of Gotham and Batman's this vigilante which he's trying to bring down. Hmm. So, this is a quote from Sean Gordon Murphy about the book and about the Joker. The line Batman rides between noble vigilante and overzealous oppressor will always be shifting as our own society changes. We know the Joker is a genius. We know he's relentless and we know he can play the crowd. So, why not make him a politician? Frank Miller molded him after David Bowie. Chris Nolan showed him as a controlled sociopath. I see the Joker as Don Draper, mm, okay. which is pretty cool. Yeah. And there's been some pages in that released and a bit of artwork and that. So, it's actually a pretty cool cool flip on the whole Batman-Joker dynamic, mm. him being reformed and, you know, Batman's still sort of this hero vigilante. But, yeah, becoming a politician and trying to bring him down. So, I thought that's a real cool story. Yeah. And that's a book I'm looking forward to reading. Yeah, it'd be very- it's a very interesting take on him. Like, hmm. It makes a lot of sense, but then also you kind of, like, I'm thinking of the chaotic side of the Joker, like him working within these kind of boundaries of a politician. Is, mm. Yeah. Like, that's an interesting arc for him to have to fit into as well, you know? To get the city on his side. Yeah. Like, you become, you can just imagine it Without now, becoming just a politician. Like having and- an outburst and fucking killing people or something, mm. you know? Because he's got to be very careful now. Like, yeah. But I like that line in that as well. Like, he knows how to play a crowd and, Mm. you know, becoming a politician. And he sees him more as Don Draper. And Don Draper is this very suave, cool character, smooth Mm. John Hamm, who we just saw in Baby Driver. Yeah. This coolest character, Don Draper. You ever watch Mad Men? Yeah, yeah, I've watched a lot of Yeah, I like Mad Men. Yeah, Mm. I I drift in and out of it. Hales, Hales has watched the whole season twice through, I think, and I just sort of drift in and out of the room uh, between episodes kind of thing. Mm. And it's one of those shows you can sit down and it feels like you can just slide in and, and watch it for a bit and, and duck out and, you know, come back a season later and it's easy enough to sort of watch yeah, and to pick up. pick up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Catch up on pretty quick. Yeah. There's a lot in that show. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Lots to chew on. But advertising's I'll- never looked so cool. No. <laughs> Like, I watch that show and I'm like, geez, advertising looks really cool. A lot of fun. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was on the shit end of it, but yeah, yeah. it's not. <laughs> and my last bit of news, this isn't really sort of geek news or whatever, but I just thought this was incredibly interesting. Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, mm-hmm. the people's champion, <laughs> the great one. Dwayne Johnson is now officially registered to run for president of the United States. Crickets. <laughs> so there was this an article. It's got to in- be better than Donald, I guess. But yeah. fuck. There was this article. I think I don't know. I think it was like the Wall Street Journal or something last year, where a journalist did like she delved into The Rock's past or whatever, and mm. he's some of his ancestors and that you know fought against slavery and all this sort of stuff, and they're I don't know war heroes or something like that. Yeah. And they did, like, a piece on him as well as a person. And they're like, you know what? If The Rock was to run for president, he would win. He would fucking destroy it. He would win. He and would- then he sort of responded to it saying, you know what? That's, you know, really cool. And he's like, I am, you know, very interested in, you know, um, our country. And I do find the position of president very alluring. And ever since then, said everyone sort of was bringing it up as a joke or whatever, and he did like a skit about it on, on SNL. And but yeah, apparently in the last few days, uh, some guy I haven't got his name written down filed papers with the Federal Electoral Commission or whatever, and some slogan or something, "Run for the Rock in 2020" or something like that. Rock is cooking. But that's interesting for Can you um, smell what America's cooking. Yeah. <laughs> There was somebody put up this great tweet, and it was like, I can just imagine The Rock in a meeting with like Vladimir Putin and him introducing himself, and then The Rock turned around saying, It doesn't matter what your name is. <laughs> I'm like, I would love to see that. <laughs> just pull out some odd like wrestling lines. Because I, I used to watch wrestling, and like when The Rock was as big as he was, you know, in his biggest time. And yeah, he was my favorite at the time. I was, I was young and whatever. 
And he's a lot of if, fun now in the movies and that to watch. Yeah. If he... <laughs> this is fucked. If he, <laughs> if he becomes president and they chisel his face into Mount Rushmore, he will literally become The Rock. <laughs> or The Mountain, even. <laughs> well, he has the eyebrow up, though. Yeah. <laughs> Mount Rockmore. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, uh, shit. He is the people's champion. He, oh, man. That would be interesting. Can you imagine The Rock running against Donald Trump? Can you imagine those debates? You've got, like, oh, The God. Rock, who is this mountain of a man on one side... And then you've got like, I don't know, <laughs> on the other side. tiny hands, coffee, fay, you know, <laughs> pussy grabbing Donald Trump on this side. <laughs> Sick man. Yeah. Wow. The Rock would crush it. Like, it would. Yeah. It would like literally like rock bottom him. It would be like but the would- coolest, like most charming guy, and he'd just like brush everything off. He's got that smile. Yeah. I can imagine him just like kissing babies and stuff. <laughs> But you'd have to have, like, a gym, like, installed in, like, the Oval Office. I think So, he's, like, up at midnight like, at the gym. <laughs> I think all actual, like, like actual politicians would just give up. They'd be like, okay, well, we can't do it anymore because celebrities have become the new politicians now. Like, they'd be like, <laughs> well, it was nice while it lasted. But, uh, we've got to go find a new job now. <laughs> cause, and all the celebrities would be, like, pushing into politics. And, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Interesting. What amazing what times do you reckon, we live in. What do you reckon our first, um, like, Australian celebrity that's going to get... Or Hemsworth, maybe? Hemo. Hemo, <laughs> running for uh, for Prime Minister. Jesus. Do you watch the... Uh, well, we don't have it. It's like on Foxtel. But Jim Jeffries has got his own show on oh, the um, Comedy Central. Yeah. And he did this interview with Pauline Hanson last week. <laughs> and it was like... I saw this article. It was like... Americans got their first introduction to Pauline Hansen, and it went just as well as you think it would. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, I saw this clip, like, Jim Jeffries. Like, he's a really funny dude. Yeah. Really funny Australian comedian. He has, like, a weatherman on the show. He's like, go to our weatherman, and it's Brad Pitt. Because <laughs> Brad Pitt, like, called him one day, yeah. and he's like, he's like, I love your stuff. He's like, I want to be on your show. And they're like, well, what can we do? And he's like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. And then he, like, texted him back a couple of days later. He's like, do you want to come be, like, the weatherman on our show? He's like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. So, they, they pay him, like, the like the SAG minimum yeah. payment, which is, like, $400 per appearance. <laughs> and he wears, like, the same suit over and over again. He turns up and does, like, this little, like, 30-second skit. With Jim, and then he, yeah, pisses off. Like, he does that, like, once a week. Like, <laughs> that's that's awesome. pretty funny. Where's my $400? Hey. <laughs> I come and do this. Wear the same suit every week. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday suit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I I pick you up and drop you off every week. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Take you to the bottle shop. Yeah, all right. Who took you to Macca's before we come here? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only because I love you. <laughs> Yeah, you're all right. We're nothing without your beard. <laughs> you know that. You've got the beardiest I don't know beard what in the world. That. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much it for my news. I don't really have anything else. What about uh, uh, Tarantino? I was about to say that Tarantino's next film is going to be well, well, focused around the Manson family murders. So the Sharon Tate murder. Mm-hmm. She was married to Roman Polanski and everything. I did read a little extra today that apparently Tarantino has approached Margot Robbie about playing Sharon Tate. Okay. And Brad Pitt's in talks maybe to play a detective on the case of the Manson family murders. Yep. And, yeah, apparently Jennifer Lawrence is in talks as well. Mm. They thought originally she might be playing Sharon Tate, but now they're like, maybe she's playing one of the Manson followers, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. How... How do you do a larger-than-life Tarantino film around, like, a real-life murder? I don't know. And a real-life <laughs> case. Yeah, that's- I don't know. I kind of- I, I always get excited for a new Tarantino film, but I'm like, this is a kind of a fine line to walk without overstepping one way or- mm. Because, like, in Glorious Bastards, for example, like, everyone does Nazis or whatever, but- he always said this was more of a fairy tale. Yeah. You know, and Hitler and that, they all get shot to shit at the end and whatever. And you're like, okay, this is whatever because it's it's fake. It's made up. They're Nazis, whatever. Yeah. And then you got Django Unchained, which is about slavery, which is, no, not the best 
thing in, you know, particular histories and whatever. But this is out, this Manson family thing, this is about a specific time, a specific day, a specific murder, specific people. You know, Sharon Tate, she was only like 27 and mm. she was like seven months pregnant, seven, eight months pregnant at the time. Ah, that's fucked. I, I don't know. I almost get the feeling that- I trust Tarantino, but- Maybe sure. maybe it's not particularly like based on that actual crime. Like, That's what might, I thought as I, well. I get the feeling maybe he's going to go more toward the root of like somebody who's in the cult who's trying to get out, maybe or something like that. You know, or mm. yeah, I don't know. And perhaps that sort of happening in the background because mm. it's a very cool backdrop to to set a movie to, and especially with his musical tastes and stuff, like that kind of end of the flower power era where mm. shit's starting to actually kind of turn like go from a happy place turning into kind of this like drug fueled crazy sort of time like it, it, that'd be a very cool setting for a movie but yeah i don't know yeah i don't know how he's gonna handle the, mm. the actual movie yeah and he's only got two movies left before he you know hangs it up and i'm like mm, don't waste a movie you know? Yeah, I don't think he will. I no, I don't think he will either. But the dude you know. seems to always know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many Oscars has he got? One or two? <laughs> yeah, he's got a couple. Anyway, that's interesting. I find that very interesting. Mm. But it, that last Tarantino movie, what's it going to be? Is it going to be Kill Bill Volume Three? <sighs> Could be. Just imagine that capping off the decade or the the ten films of Tarantino. Mm. Just imagine that box set now trying to think of like a topic or a kind of specific type of movie that he always talks about that he hasn't done yet. Oh, he's talked he, about so much. He kind of, yeah, it's hard to put a finger on it. I would love to see Tarantino do like, write a comic. Oh, fuck yeah. That would go That'd off. Be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I know. I have heard him say in interviews and stuff that once he's done directing, like he still wants to do film related stuff, but he's like, perhaps I'll write a book instead about film. Mm-hmm. He's like, perhaps I'll do that next. He's like, I don't know. But he's like, I'll still work in this business, but just in a different way, in a different format. I almost wonder if a guy like that can really hang up his boots, you know? Like, he'll probably do it for a while and then get that itch mm. and be like, you know, yeah, go maybe go back to indie film or something like that, like something smaller, you know, get out of Hollywood. I don't know. Like, But he has said, though, that- like, he he doesn't want to be one of those directors who just keeps directing and their careers just their quality films just gets watered down and you know not as critically well received mm. as like previous ones have say like like a ridley scott for example yeah like ridley scott's made like a lot of great films and that and even like some of his recent ones have been really good mm. but you know like yeah alien wasn't so well received and then you had prometheus before that and everyone's sort of starting to get a bit dirty mm. on old rids the bigger the name, too, the higher the expectations. True. And the, uh, yeah. Very true. I think that's it. Hmm. End of news. End of news. Um, while we're at it, uh, this week I watched The Belko Experiment. Have you heard of The Belko Experiment? No. The Belko Experiment is written by James Gunn. Not directed by James Gunn. It's directed by Greg McLean, who directed Wolf Creek and oh. Wolf Creek 2. Okay. Rogue. Aussie director. Yep. So, apparently... Um, James Gunn submitted the screenplay, I think it was just before he made Super, but he was going through a divorce at the time, Mm. and everything was pretty rough, or he just came out of his divorce, and he didn't really want to do a hard edge movie where everyone's, like, hating on each other, he just wanted to be, like, surrounded by family and friends, so he sort of, they just put it on the shelf. Yep. But after going into the galaxy and they hit it big, they approached him to direct it again. But they got someone else in to direct. I think he produced and then as well. But yeah, pretty good horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> the story is um, it's about this American office building in, where is it? I think it's Cambodia. Right. So the day starts out, all these people sort of going going to work and whatever. And they have like all this militia in that there, like local militia yep. that are sort of there guarding the building when they go to work and that, but they've all sort of been sent home for the day. And there's new, like, American military dudes and that there, like, oh, we need to search a cars and stuff. We need to check this out. And, like, what the fuck's going on here? Anyway, mm. so all these people go to work and they start their morning, they're going about their day, and they're like, what's going on with all these people outside? You know, where's the militia going? And why are they all going into that abandoned hangar next door? And then all of a sudden, 
there's this announcement over the PA, mm. like the building wide PA, and there's this voice on there, and the voice says, well, the gist of what it says is, you have to kill two people within the next half hour, or there will be consequences. Everyone's just like, what the fuck's this? This is this is bullshit. This is some prank or something. Yeah. So like, you know, anyway, we better evacuate. So everyone goes to evacuate, and as they they're all evacuating, what the fuck's going on? This is a prank, and they get down to the lobby. And then the voice comes back over and is like, you know, you can't leave. And then all these shutters, like, come up over the doors, over all the windows, like, all these big blast shutters. Yeah. And they can't get out. Anyway, so there are consequences. And then the voice comes back over the PA and it's like, there are 80, there are 85 of you in the building. You have to kill 30 people in the next two hours if you don't, we will kill 60 of you at random. And it's like, we don't care how you do it. 30 people have to be dead in the next two hours. There's a, there's a way that they kill them. I can't really say without sort of spoiling it. But yeah. And then they're like, time starts now. Like, everyone has to be, like, 30 people have to be dead by, like, 2.30 in the afternoon. And they're like, right. oh, fuck. And then everyone in the office sort of divides. You sort of get the management that are like, okay, we're going to figure a way out of this. What are we going to do? And then you've got the other people that sort of just run and hide and then everyone sort of starts to turn on everyone. Mm. So you have the groups that are like, we're just going to kill because we've got to do it. I don't want to die. And then you've got the other people going, this is fucked. You can't kill anyone. You know, what gives you the right to kill anyone? And yeah, it's um, it was a pretty cool little horror movie actually. I guess for about an hour and a half and yep. yeah, pretty gory. Pretty gory. Lots Chicken of people getting killed sort of and, and getting shot and getting stabbed and swearing and stuff. And yeah, actually, pretty good movie. I do recommend it, actually. Mm. Three out of five Three from Jags. Five. Yeah. Nice. I definitely recommend you watching that. Yeah, it's a good little movie to watch. To go. Yeah. Mm. I can't really say too much more about it without giving it away because I knew about it. I don't think I ever really watched a trailer. I think I watched a teaser trailer. Yeah. But once I watched it, I'm like, I'm glad I didn't know more than I did. But yeah, yeah, cool little horror movie. Great little idea. I don't know if there'd ever be a sequel. Maybe no. you could do a sequel to it, but hmm. pretty small budget sort of movie. Yeah, or? it was a five million dollar movie. Oh wow, cheap! But it only made ten million worldwide. Oh, okay, yeah. But I imagine it'd probably make more on DVD and video on demand and that sort of stuff. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. All these office people just like turning on each other, and I've sort of worked in that environment as well. And I sort of made me think back to sort of like my office days, and I'm like, if I got shut into that office, like, would I, would I murder someone <laughs> to, yeah, to stay yeah. alive? Would it's I murder? You know, I worked with like like 45, 50 people in that office. Would I, you know, kill twenty? Would I kill them all? all. <laughs> would I kill them all? <laughs> <laughs> you know, sorry, any previous coworkers. <laughs> Just pick up like your your sticky tape holder and roll and just bash someone's head in. <laughs> yeah, mm. it's yeah, good little movie though. Mm. Yeah, cool. I recommend it. That's is, about all I can say about it without giving too much away. Has Patty watched it or? No, nah, mate. No, nah. no. Nah, I reckon he will though because I told him it was good, it was quality. Yeah, and he <laughs> listens to me, so he'll watch it. <laughs> it sounds like it's up his alley, that mm. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of fun. Good bit of fun. Yeah. Mm. I do like a good horror movie every now and then. Mm. Yeah. Just a silly horror movie you chuck on. Yeah. Like, this is a bit silly, but I'm having a good time. Yeah, why not? Mm. <laughs> bit of blood and guts. People getting stabbed with kitchen knives. And you watch everyone goes to the cafeteria. They're all, like, trying to grab, like, all the- Where are all the knives? And this one woman picks up, like, a butter knife. And she's like, stay back, stay back. <laughs> and then you get, like, all the psycho, like, burly guys and management guys. There's, like, one guy played by- can't remember his name. John C. McGinley. He played, like, the the doctor in Scrubs, like the asshole doctor. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, he's, like, at the start, like, he's trying to, he's trying to, like, crack onto one of the office girls. Yeah. He's like, oh, he's like, I can tell you, like, you're flirting with me and those suggestive emails and that you've been sending me. She's like, what the fuck, dude? Like, you're dreaming. She, like, pretty much pushes him, like, snobs him and, like, fobs him off. Mm. And this is, like, just after the blast doors and that. And I was like, you shouldn't have done that. Because you, yeah. this, he's one of these guys who's just going to push over the fucking edge. Yeah. And what happens, he turns out to be like one of the psycho murderer bastards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good though. Good bit of fun. Awesome. So, we saw Baby Driver tonight. Yeah. Do you want to tell people what Baby Driver was about? Give us the uh, plot. We're going to let you do the plot oh, today. fuck me. Here we go. So, uh, Baby Driver is centered around this kid called Baby who's a driver. <laughs> For, a getaway, a getaway driver. A getaway driver. Yeah, I should say. Um, 
and he basically like works for the kind of uh well what, what's kevin spacey's character he's just kind of like a doc a, doc is his name in the movie but right. it's a code name same with baby baby is a code name yeah mm. so it seems like they've had like this past and he's got this debt to repay to kevin spacey mm. um not really sure what it is. It sounds like maybe it's just he took him under his wing as a kid and he's sort of... Oh, you said it in the movie. Oh, I did? Yeah. I missed that, yeah. Um, Because baby's parents are killed when yeah. he's young. Yeah. And since he's like 12 or whatever, he's been stealing cars and he stole Doc's car. Which oh, had a, that's right, yeah. It had a, had a boot full of merchandise. Yeah. And like, yeah, he lost the car or whatever and it got impounded. So ever since then, like, Doc tracked him down. And he's been repaying this debt for, like, the last eight or ten years. Yeah, yeah. And he's just, like, about to pay off his debt, like, as a getaway driver. So, pretty much any money he earns from a heist, Doc takes, you know, 95% of it and gives him, like, you know, a single wad of cash, you know, mm. for himself. He's like, you're close to paying off your debt. But then, yeah, baby's close to paying it off. But then he meets a very nice girl named Deborah who works at the local diner and uh, things start to change from there. He starts to, um, yeah, sort of. Well, he can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and mm. uh, yeah. And this girl's come along just at the right time, yeah. Mm. And she's not really a particularly attached to anything either, and just like you know, his kind of dream girl of like being able to ditch this life and and, and just drive off into the distance, yeah, drive of. off into the sunset, yeah. But it doesn't sort of work out that way, so mm. yeah, he's got to do one final job, yeah, before. You know, it's going to get the big payday, and then after that, he decides they're going to go. But as always in life, things don't go according to plan. You, yeah, you deal with those kind of uh, underworld folk, and they don't let go of you as easy as you you hope. So, mm. yeah. So, how'd you like the film? I really enjoyed it. I did too. Yeah. I had yeah. a good time. Really it's good a, time. It was slightly different tone than I th- was expecting from the trailer. I, I thought it was going to be a bit more like a comedy, but it. Kind of was like a comedy, thriller, drama. Like, that just had a bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Couldn't really pin it down to a genre. No, no. Mm. Which uh, I really liked about it. It threw me a bit. Yeah. Mm. And the soundtrack was fucking excellent. Loved it. Yeah. Like, it's like the film was built around the soundtrack. Mm. Mm. Kind of like a. Exactly. You know, you think of soundtracks, you think of like Guardians of the Galaxy, obviously. But yeah, this is another sort of film where. This is almost like a 90s, 1920s, 1930s animation where, like, they time the action to the, the music. Like, everything's happening on the yeah, beat. Yeah, to the beats. Yeah. Like, there's this, all the gunfights, like, in the... Like, the song's playing in the background and all the gunshots are, like, in tune to, like, the beat of the song. Yeah, it's like... like doo, 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 boom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fucking great. Great yeah, movie, it I really, really loved it. This Ansel Elgort guy who played Baby, like I've never heard of him before, but he was really fucking good. Yeah, I I really liked his character. It was really, we were saying it like on the way here, like a pretty understated kind of skinny little kind of like, you know, just a just mm. a kid. And you wouldn't pick him out in a crowd or anything no. like that. He sort of just blends into the background. But he has a lot of charisma as well. And like even just the way that he walks up and talks to that girl, uh, to Deborah. In the diner, you like he's got a lot of like you know he's got the moves, yeah, but he doesn't come off as like a a jerk or anything or mm. you know a kind of cocky jock or anything. He's kind of he plays that fine line in the middle of kind of awkward young guy, but then also very confident in himself as well. Mm. Yeah, and he listens to music pretty much all the time. Mm. So when he was a kid and he had an accident and he's got tinnitus, so he listens to music to drown out mm. you know the buzzing and the yeah. So that's where the music comes in. Mm. Mm. I really like the dynamic with his uh, with his foster dad, Joshua. Yeah, that was cool. Mm. Yeah. He's mute and whatever, and he signs and mm. yeah, that was really cool. I really liked that movie. Mm. I just like everything. Really uh, great Edgar Wright touch. Oh. I noticed at the beginning, the first scene where he goes to get coffee. It was just like Shaun of the Dead, where Shaun leaves to go down the shot. It's this one continuous tracking shot of him going to get coffee, he gets a coffee, and then he goes back out of the coffee shop and back to where he came. And it's just one long continuous just tracking shot, just following him down the street and across the road into All the coffee shop. All time to the music as well. All time to everything. the music, and he's dancing the whole way. And- you can hear everything, like everything in that scene is time to the music. They're like. There's a jackhammer going in the background. And you can hear it going like, and like walks past, you know, 
like when he walks out of the cafe and the bell rings and goes like ding 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 ding, mm. ding. like in the background like everything's timed perfectly to the music that he's listening to in his headphones like, i fucking love that it was really cool man as a as a filmmaker how how much discipline would you have to put into building a scene like that but edgar wright's really good at that sort of stuff you oh, just yeah. have to look at like scott pilgrim yeah because that's sort of where he sort of did that first thing sort of with a, like a lot of the 8-bit sound effects and game themes and stuff and just like the, you know, yeah. just putting them into all these scenes is just so well done. Yeah. Mm. I think he's taking a step up from that with this movie, absolutely. Probably yeah, two steps so. up it's that good. Yeah, I think mm. so, yeah. It's, it definitely has his signature of that kind of like lots of close-ups of just objects and things and, and like those kind of whip pans that he does a bit. Like not heaps of that kind of, like it wasn't as much as... Uh, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz have, you know, where they kind of whip yeah. from thing to thing. But there was a little bit of that. But it definitely, like, it felt like one of his movies. He always has that kind of something about the way that he, like, whooshes. And the sound effects in his movies are always very clear and big and, like, snappy kind of thing. And what did you think of the other cast? Like, who else was in it? John Hamm, mm. uh, Kevin Spacey, Jamie Foxx. I thought Jamie Foxx was really cool as Bats. He you know, very... he had all the bat bat tattoos on his neck. Yeah, ah. <laughs> he was great. Like uh, that kind of unhinged. He was. You thought he was going to be the. Well, yeah, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> but you... he did have that 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 quote in the first scene. He's like when he's talking about baby. He's like, "What's this guy? Is he, he got mental problems or something?" He's like, "He can't have mental problems." He's like, "I've got mental problems. That position's already taken." <laughs> 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 Yeah, he he was great. Like that, just like you, you felt very uncomfortable around every scene that he was in. Yeah, yeah. Budget for this movie was pretty low. Well, not low, low, but it was only thirty four million. Oh, really? But apparently, it's done really well. I did see something the other day that Sony were talking to Edgar Wright because they want a sequel. Mm. Edgar Wright's not the kind of guy to make sequels. Maybe no. he will do it with Baby Driver. Maybe, but no. Yeah. I really liked the soundtrack in this movie. There was a bit of everything. Mm. And I like the scene with, there's a scene where John Hamm actually just has a chat with Baby yep. about, you know, what he's listening to and do you have, like, because he's a getaway driver, he's like, do you have, like, the one song, like, the one getaway song that gets you pumped and it was, um, there's a Queen track and then they put it, he's like, have you got it? And he's like, yeah, I've got it on this other iPod and they click it in and then they both start to listen to it. I read today, apparently, um, somebody asked, I think it was Edgar Wright on, on Reddit or on Twitter or something like that. They're like, why does baby have so many pairs of glasses and so many iPods? Mm. And he's like, well, baby has been stealing cars since he was 12. So you have to imagine every car is stolen. There, there was an iPod and he's been taking iPods and glasses from right. every car. Cause there's a cool scene at the start where Jamie Foxx takes his glasses, his Ray-Bans <laughs> and he turns around and he has this. He's, he's talking to someone else off camera and you see baby in the background he just pulls out another pair of sunglasses and puts them on <laughs> like and then Jamie Fox around turns around bears. yeah <laughs> Jamie Fox turns around and sees him and just like slaps the glasses off his head but then he has another pair <laughs> he just pulls them out again <laughs> I really like this movie yeah we had this chat like because we at the moment like 90% of the time we're only going to see superhero movies yeah, as much as I enjoyed last week with um, Spider-Man and, and stuff. And we fucking enjoyed it. Yes, we did. I, I really did. But, like, before seeing that movie, I was pretty much out on superhero movies for a bit. I felt like like I just need a break. Mm. Yeah. We got a big couple of weeks coming up, though. Like, we, I think we have Dunkirk next week. Yep. Which I'm not... You weren't really sold on that. Yeah. I'm medium. I'm medium on Dunkirk. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm, then I'm after that, excited. we've got. I, I I think it's going to be good. I kind of like those war movies, though. I do too. Yeah. yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I'll definitely go. Yeah. And then the week after that, we've got War for the Planet of the Apes, which I'm really looking forward to. Mm. Definitely going to binge watch the first two films before yeah, we back. do that episode. Yeah. Mm. I just seen, love that. I love that one. character. I love Caesar. He's such an interesting character, mm. and Andy Circus is just fuck man. He's just you can't you can't top Andy Circus. He's the best. Yeah, he knows mm. what he's doing. Yeah. I've seen this, the second one recently, but I haven't seen the first one since it came out. I've got to mm. watch that again. Yeah. yeah, well, Pat and I went and saw both of them. Like, the first one, sort of, we just went and seen it sort of on a whim. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, this trailers look pretty good and this might be all right. But, yeah, I didn't. 
We had didn't that, expect it to be that good. It had that ridiculously long name and it kind of... You, I think everybody sort of thought it. Rise like, of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, you've got too many of those in the, in the title. <laughs> like, um, And I think it caught everyone by surprise because it sounded ridiculous <laughs> when mm. it came out. But it was great. Yeah. Fucking great. Mm. We really like the spin on the whole apes, how the apes are, the simian flu, mm. you know. Trying to come up with a cure for Alzheimer's and, yeah, works better on apes than it does on humans. Yeah. We were talking about Baby Driver, though. Yes, it's Baby Driver. <laughs> what else did I like about this film? Was there anything you didn't like about the film? What I didn't like? Um, I, I I didn't really not like anything about the film. I really no, liked it. No, no. I can't think of anything that really irked me at all. Yeah, Baby was a... Like, maybe, maybe at the start, I think because I didn't... You're sort of still getting to know Baby at the start, but the whole intro sequence where he's kind of dancing down the street and stuff, I really liked that scene, but I kind of was like, who the fuck is this guy? Mm. <laughs> like, you know, he's like, who who does that sort of thing? But then I kind of, you know, after you watch him for a while, you sort of start to understand who he is and yeah. But I think that maybe just those first couple of minutes, I was just like, whoa, what what is this? Mm. Kind of thing. That opening was great. The first robbery in the first... Yeah. The uh the car chase, the castle. Car chase was fucking excellent. Yeah, yeah. that was awesome, eh? Yeah. Mm. Love that. But yeah. a good movie. Yeah, I I, I, I don't really know what it I much else really I can say about it. it, to be honest. No. Just go see it. It's uh It's definitely worth your money. Worth your time. Yeah. It's a nice change from because the superhero genre ain't going away anytime soon. No. As long as it's still making bank, as mm. long as we all still go and see them, you know, they're gonna keep making them. So we've got to take the opportunity to go and see these other films, mm. like we used to. We used to go see all different films. Like, mm. I, I do, don't really I go- I think one point in the movie, actually, because I think, actually, Deborah says it. Um, she goes, oh, you don't talk much and uh, and you drive fast or something. And I sort of went, is this a, like a Ryan Gosling kind of thing here? <laughs> <laughs> like, or is this the trope for drivers? Like, you know, but- uh, yeah, I don't know. But aside from that, like, I don't know where, even where I was going with that. <laughs> I don't know. But he does say to her, he's like, this This is the most I've... What I've spoke to you today, this is the most I've like talked to anyone mm. in like a year. Because he doesn't talk much. He, yeah. No, he And he even does. when... Most of the talking he does is like signing to like Joshua. That's most of the talking he does. I figured that's kind of why he doesn't talk much is because mm. the guy that he hangs out with the most and connects with the most doesn't talk. So, mm. yeah. He sings a lot. Well, not sing, but, you know. Mouths it. Mouths it, yeah. Mm. yeah. You can tell what's going on. Yeah. But yeah, I really liked it. Really, really written well. Yeah. I, I, it's a very solid film. The it, scene in the post not, office where they go to- It's kind of like breaking any kind of new amazing genre or grounds or anything, but it, it's like just a really well-crafted movie, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely worth a watch, guys. Yeah. I definitely recommend going out and see it. I fucking love Ed- Edgar Wright as a director. I do too. too. I just fucking love everything he does. All right, right here, right now. Favourite Edgar Wright movie? Oh, shit. Um, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Baby Driver? Is Baby that it? Driver. <laughs> well, you direct space, but that's not a movie. Yes, um, oh, shit. I'm going to drop my phone. Um, oh, shit. I don't know. I think Hot Fuzz. I'd have to say Hot Fuzz as well. I think, yeah. That was one of those movies where I watched it over and over and over and found new little tiny things all the time. Like, just little tidbits that kept kept coming back. Or little gags in the background that you never noticed before. Mm. I did read an article the other day. Someone interviewed him about Ant-Man. They asked him about Ant-Man. Mm. And I said, have you seen Ant-Man? He said, no, I haven't. And they're like, why? Why haven't you watched it? And he's like, it's... He's like, I worked on that film for so long. He's like, watching it now would be like... Watching someone like have sex with your girlfriend, yeah, <laughs> it's like he's like I just can't. He's like I can't bring myself to do it. Yeah, and I feel bad for him about that because that was before the whole MCU came along. Because he was attached to that for a long time, for like yeah. eight years. He was attached to that movie. Yeah, and it's not like he worked on it for the whole eight years, but yeah, you know, sort of on and off over eight years to work on something, and then. For them to come in and be like, yeah, we need to fit it into this mold now with everything else. And we need you to change this and change that. And you're like, hmm. It's crazy. They should have, like, in, rather than doing that, they should have just signed it off over to Sony or something. Because 
I don't know. Did, would anyone give a rat's ass if Ant Man wasn't actually in the the MCU? Like, I mean, he nah. he played a kind of you know funny role in the the airport scene and stuff with a giant man and stuff. But really, he he's not that important in the MCU. They, no, they should have really. just sort of like let him be a Deadpool and go off. And do that movie thing. was fun. It was a nice. It was a nice change. Yeah, it was a lighter heist. They bill it as like this heist flick. It's a heist caper. Mm. The same with all heist caper movies. They spend half the movie planning the heist, and then when they get there, the heist goes to shit. Mm. So they have to improvise. I always hate that. I hate that about heist movies. They spend half the movie planning it, and they practice. They're like, we've made up this small thing, like, of what you're actually going to do so you can practice, and then they do it for days, and he finally gets it, and then they go to do it, and then, like, oh, this person has it was meant to turn left, but he's turned right, now he's fucked up the whole thing. We have to improvise. Yeah. And I'm like, ah. Oh. That's interesting about Baby Driver. It's kind of like, well, it, it's not really a heist movie. No. It's a movie around centred around heists. But, um... Yeah, it doesn't. It never has that moment. It definitely has a moment where it's somewhere in the middle there, where it, you know, shit doesn't go to plan. <laughs> mm. Um, thanks to fucking nutcase bats. But yeah, like it's not really a heist movie, is it? No, I, I was. I I think that's what I was expecting going in. I thought it was going to be a heist movie. It's really hard to put a finger on what this movie is. Yeah, it's not an action flick. It's not a comedy. It's not. a... I don't know. Maybe it's kind of a character piece, but not really. Comedy thriller? Comedy thriller. It's definitely more thrillerish towards the end. Yeah. In the beginning, it's kind of this happy-go-lucky, these guys are bad, but they're not killing anyone, and they're running away from the cops. They're like, ah, oh, this is pretty good. And then in the middle, it's sort of, I don't know, it becomes more character-ish, and then to the end, it becomes more action thrillery, more mm. thriller than anything. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It's sort of just this- Amalgam of genres. It's pretty good. Yeah. Bloody I, like it. And I like that poster as well. Yeah. Pink. It's really Pink cool. Pink in that poster. Yeah. I like it. Don't do shit like that anymore. What would you give it? Four out of five. Yeah, same. I'd give it about four and a half, I think. Mm. Yeah. I'd I, give it four think, sparkling pink iPods out of five. I think I'd nearly give it a five, but I, I don't know. I just coming off the back of Spider-Man, like last week I came out of the movie... With that kind of like, like fucking tingle down your spine, like really excited mm. about a movie, and then this week, um, I l- really liked this movie, but I didn't have that kind of like, yeah, oh my god, like it, yeah, it was a great movie, but yeah, it's not like my it world feels is set to flame dirty now. Dirty to not give it a five after, yeah, I know, like it, it, it's but a I perfectly can't... great movie, and there's nothing wrong with it. Just... What I've always equated to, like. You can't give a movie... If you can pick a fold in something, it's not a 10 out of 10. It's not a 5 out of 5. Obviously, it's not perfect. Yeah. A, like, full ranking movie is you have to consider perfect. Like, a, like with last week, the Spider-Man, I loved every minute of it. I couldn't really fault it. No. Therefore, it was... A, and I had an awesome time. The characters were amazing. Michael Keaton. That did everything that set out to do. That like, scene in the car alone is yeah. worth price of admission. Yeah, yeah. Is worth you spending twenty bucks on a fucking ticket to watch a six and a half minute scene of three people in a car. Mm. Mm. Yeah, corker of a flick. Want to go yeah. see it again? Probably will this weekend. Yeah, yeah. I can nearly go back. I reckon. Take the lady. Yeah, she hasn't seen it yet. Mm. Still got to sell it to her. <laughs> Haven't you done I, that yet? Well, I did. Like, I came home that night and I was like, "You have to see this. this is actually really good." And she was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> I think I think she's just. You know, Spider Man's just not her thing. Watch The Handmaid's Tale instead. Yeah, been watching that. Jeez, so have I. It's a very good show, but yeah, it's very. It's bleak as fuck. It's yeah, it's not a happy show. No, you kind of feel <laughs> dirty when you watch it. Yeah, like this military state or this military. You wouldn't really call it state. You call it country. How suppose. many episodes are you in now? I've only watched one, but I did okay. watch the. The movie adaptation for 1990. Yep. With, fuck, I forget her name. Natasha Richardson. She was Liam Neeson's wife. She oh, died. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she died in a skiing. Oh, she had a head injury in a skiing accident like eight years ago and she died. Yeah. Poor thing. But yeah, it was, yeah. It was, yeah, it's not a happy. No. It's not a happy world. 
No. And like, everyone's just... infertile, and all the big wigs who establish this new military country take these fertile women pretty much to be, like, sex slaves, to bear children. It's, mm. yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. It starts the show with... is great, though. It's oh, a really good show. It is great. Like, everyone should watch it. It's I've, I've been really loving it. We're, we're up to the last episode, so just got one left to go for the watch that season tomorrow one. night yeah definitely but yeah it, it sprinkles hope throughout like the uh the whole season and then just snatches it away as quick as he <laughs> as quick as it delivered it sort of thing but um there's some great scenes where like it because Hales has read a lot of Mar- margaret atwood books which is who wrote the handmaid's tale and uh she she's read that one and said um like I think in the book you don't get much of the backstory. It's all just like through the eyes of of uh Offred. Offred. Yeah. yeah. So it's all through her eyes and kind of like you know, you spend the whole book just going, What the fuck is going on? Whereas the show delves back in time a little bit. Mm, has a little flashbacks back and forth. Yeah, mm. and it gives you an idea of like how the world came to be the, or how the America came to be the way it was. Mm. And uh, there's, oh, man, there's some great episodes, like great little flashbacks anyway, like episode maybe three or four, they kind of show you where um, like she's basically going through a normal day today shit at work. And then all of a sudden the boss calls a meeting and like basically just says that all the women are like fired and they're like, what the fuck? And then there's just all these big dudes with guns standing around, like big security guys and stuff. Like, it's just, and he's like, uh, all the women are like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> and he's like, I, I I, can't do anything about this. I'm sorry. It's not my choice. Like, I, I can't do anything. And it's just really creepy. Like, what the it's fuck really bleak is going because on? You watch the flashbacks on the show and it's like it's it's the world it's our world as it is today yeah and then from to go from this what we are now into that you're like man shit must have got really bad because like a lot of the world is becoming infertile mm. and that you know they take it as a very god is punishing us or whatever and mm. you know it it becomes a very religious kind of thing you like praising to god and they've got all these centers where they test these women and they train them to be handmaids mm. you know pretty much these childbearing slaves one one of the things that really sort of got me it was a little thing but when the these women have regular names i think the the main the main character her real name is is jane i think or kate i don't know it's one of the two yes yeah, but when they're assigned they're given names so her name is offred mm. or they just call her fred for short but there's another handmaid, because the handmaids have to travel in pairs, there's another handmaid she travels with called Off Glen. Mm. And there's a scene in the movie, the movie adaptation I watch, you've got this Off Glen character, and then Off Red meets up with her again the next day, and it's this different woman. Mm. And she's like, where's Off Glen? And she's like, I am Off Glen. Yeah, they so do they that keep, in the season they too, yeah. So they keep the names assigned, but... The people interchange. Well, basically, I think what the name comes from. So it's because I think the Offred's like the commander of the, the house commander, or whatever. Yeah. I think his first name's Fred, and I think whoever owns the other one is called Glenn. So they, oh, take, okay. they take like off, and then the name of the uh, the man in the the house. So that's why they like just property of Fred. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's fucked. <laughs> yeah, it's bleak. But the show is really good. Yeah. Um, who's mm. the lady? She's from um, Mad Men. Um, oh, man. She plays Peggy in Mad Men. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? I forget her name. But yeah, she's really good. Fucking she excellent. Yeah. She produces the show on that as well. Yeah, she's great. Elizabeth Moss. Ah, uh, yeah. Elizabeth Moss. Yeah. yeah, she's really good. Yeah. And in the book, it's all about the narration. So the book is sort of told from off Glenn's off Fred, beg your pardon, perspective. And she sort of narrates the book and is told, like, she's telling her own story. In the movie, there's not much of that. There's a tiny little bit. 
Mm. But in the show, there's a lot more of that. Like, she'll be having character interactions and they have to speak a particular way and act a particular way. So she does that. So she'll say something to someone and then it'll cut to her internal monologue and she'll be, she's just like, you know, I just want to fucking scream. Yeah. You know, something like that. You know, I just want to grab your head and smash it into the wall. Pious little shit. Yeah, (laughs) pious little shit. That was in the first episode. Yeah. 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 Mm. I love it. it. it, what's most disturbing about that show, I find, is um, it's actually feels like I, I think it's a timely, like it's very timely in its release now, because it feels like we could only be like four or five steps away from <laughs> becoming this world, like from today, because you, you you've got not this- if President Johnson gets in, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you have this kind of political climate growing across the world right now. Where the left and the right are like fucking butting heads harder than probably they have in a long time. And like this seems like that kind of thing where they've bubbled up under the surface for so long. And then all it takes is like one big push from one side or the other. And I mean, that's kind of what happens in the show. It just happens like fucking over the course of a couple of months and the whole country's fucking mm. taken over. And Because, yeah, like people become infertile. Yeah. Not only do women become infertile, but men are becoming sterile as well. Mm. So, yeah, they, it's not not looking good for the human race. And it's yeah, these the, all these new rules are actually constructed by men. Like it, it shows you later on in the series, like the guys sitting in the back of a limo, basically coming up with the ideas for you know, like how how are we going to uh, let this fly with the wives? Like how are we going to have sex with them? And they're like, oh. Well, Maybe we, they can be a part of it, you know. Mm. <laughs> you know, so it's that's a why they're ceremony. Sort of playing, yeah, yeah, it's real. Yeah, like, and they, they they say that they're like, well, we can't call it like a uh, like an event or a thing. And then they're like, how about ceremony? Ceremony sounds like important and blah, blah. Uh, and it's just like, oh god, this is like gross middle aged white guys coming up with their mm. uh, ideal world. Uh, yeah, of Donald. Great show. Great show. <laughs> <laughs> off Donald <laughs> Jesus <laughs> no thanks um, but yeah um, The Handmaid's Tale it's on Hulu in uh, the US mm-hmm. and if you're in Australia it's on SBS On Demand for free you can watch the uh, the 10 episodes of the first season mm. and I know for a fact that it, um, it was picked up for a second season pretty much straight away mm. yeah I see this going on for a bit I think mm. very high quality filmmaking stuff yeah really nice show Mm. Not n- not <laughs> nice, not nice, but it you know looks great. Like the quality looks of the show great, is great. Great acting, mm. yeah, everything. Great yeah. writing, tense, tense as fuck. Yeah, yeah. bleak, bleak man. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Anyway, that might do it. Yep. We might wrap it up. Nice short episode today. We didn't really have fuck all to talk about. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't really have too much to say about Baby Driver. Anyway, it was it was good. It was a good time. And- yeah. It's I hard. don't know. Yeah, I didn't get that tingle like I got from Spider Man, but it's a yeah, difficult it still- movie to talk about because it's it ticked all the boxes in every way possible. But then I don't know. I I, I can't. Put Does my it kind of feel on. throwaway at the same time? A little. Like bit. I've seen that. That was great. Brush it to the side. Move on to the next thing. A little bit. Yeah. 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 I think I think I was waiting for that kind of. Uh, that comedic thing that Edgar Wright does with his, you know, uh, it's a kind of special thing that they've got with uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost mm. and stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I love the movie, but I can't, I like, I don't, yeah, I'm not going to rush back and watch it again either. Yeah. Weird. I'll pick it up when it comes out, but. Yeah. Mm. I'm not, like, I would, yeah. I would never turn it off if it was playing yeah. know, on TV or whatever. But at the yeah. same time, like, I, I'm not. Chomping in the pit to go back to the cinema to watch it again. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've seen it and it was great. And, yeah, I had a good time. But, yeah, I'm not really keen to rush back to watch it again. Yeah. But, yeah, I'll definitely watch it when it comes out. But I'll buy the soundtrack. Soundtrack. Yeah, I, I, I think I might even get the soundtrack tomorrow, maybe. Yeah. Go to NJB and pick it up. Good mix. You. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bobby, if uh, people want to find you online, if uh, they want to apply to be your handmaid, <laughs> where can they go? <laughs> Off, Man, that sorry. Offbob.com. <laughs> <laughs> Offbob. <laughs> no shit. No, uh my website's bobbybaxter.com. Uh you can pick up an issue of issue one of Brown Fury there. I haven't had many sales lately, so if you haven't read it yet, 
please uh, grab a copy. I sign them all. So. Yeah, it's only like five bucks. Like, you can afford five bucks, guys. Yeah, plus shipping. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and like, yeah, we 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 want to see issue two. So, so yeah. Well, you gotta you gotta support it if you want. You know, we want issue two, so you gotta buy issue one. <laughs> so, mm. yeah, there'll be an issue two one day when yep. I when I've got the time. But uh, yeah, uh, social media stuff's Bobby Baxter cartoons mostly on on uh, all the platforms: Instagram, Facebook, mm. Tumblr, all that jazz. So. Have you had a chance to have a bit of a bit of a doodle lately in your spare time? Or uh, not much, really. No. no. Too uh, busy watching The Handmaid's Tale. Here and there, I, I started. I've started working on a, a piece for that Hollow Knight game that I'm oh, sweet. About, so, um, but I've just been chipping away very slowly at that. You know. 10 minutes a day kind of thing at the end of the day but um yeah i'll put something out of that pretty soon and um i kind of want to do some spidey stuff after the other week (laughs) (laughs) nice effeminate spider-man yeah oh no (laughs) (laughs) if you want to find the beta geeks you can go to facebook to find us so facebook fuck it hell (laughs) fakebook.com you can go to facebook.com forward slash beta geeks pod um instagram at the beta geeks and twitter at beta geeks pod um i still have not heard back from itunes i'm opening a beer like (laughs) two minutes right at the end of the episode (laughs) (laughs) yeah i haven't heard back from itunes yet it's well it hasn't been like 14 working days but yeah it's been Uh. just over two weeks in real time but uh, Matt, hopefully I'll hear something next week. But yeah, I just want to get the show up, get it up, yeah, get all the episodes up wanna, there. People so. want to hear it in the mm. car and stuff. So yeah, come on, Apple, come on, Apple. I'll eat all the apples. <laughs> Actually, I don't eat apples anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> just get beer. That's where you get it all from. All your hops. <laughs> yeah, hops. Where do hops so, come from? Hops. You grow it. Do you? Yeah, my old man grows it. In his yeah, backyard. I know, because your dad's a big beer aficionado. He is. Mm. We have to get him in on one day and like do a beer episode. Bring it, bring in a little paddle for us all to. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be cool. Tee that up. <laughs> Tee that up. We'll do a beer episode. Oh god, it'll be like a seven or eight hour episode if you get dad in here talking about <laughs> fucking beer. <laughs> Shit. I tell us. Talk about. Tell us. Take us through your process, Jack. How does? It, where does it start? So this is a ten part mini series on. <laughs> <laughs> the Art of Brewing yeah. <laughs> by Jack Baxter. Back Jack Baxter. <laughs> Fuck it, <hell>. oh. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to after this. Um, you can also go to Tee Public if you want to buy a Beta Geeks t-shirt or a mug or some stickers or a nice laptop case. I haven't even got a t-shirt yet. I need to get on that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. No. <laughs> so I for my tax money to come. Yeah. All those dollar dollar bills. <laughs> Dollar dollar coins <laughs> that aren't going in the parking meters. Bloody yeah, lawns is the city council. Probably all go to my hex hex debt, but Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta pay them debts, mate. Uh. Mm. Anyway, from all of us here in the beer cave, I wanna thank you for listening. I want to thank those who like, share, and subscribe. And those that don't, you wanna get on it, you'll get a thank you as well. Um, next week, don't know next week, don't want to think too far ahead, maybe we'll do Dunkirk, maybe not, um, who knows. Is, uh, Shiny Man back in the, the studio for next Fuck week? Fuck I know, I can't pin him down, yeah, I don't know what he's doing anymore. Jet setting all over the yeah, country. Yeah, I don't know, I barely see him anymore. with Jimmy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking rock star. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I, you yeah, know, I don't really see him too much anymore, to be honest, he's too bloody busy, he's got too much on. Yeah. Well, anyway. you know, life of a rock star. He's- yeah, we'll see next week. Anyway, from all of us here in the Beer Cave, I want to say thanks to everyone, and we'll see you all next week on the Beer to Geeks. Hey! Hey! Go see Baby Driver. It's really good. Yeah, do it.